Hey there, everybody. It's been a while, but I wanted to share a very interesting use case that I came across um, that I think will empower a lot of people building client portals and internal tools on software will find really, really interesting. So if you've ever wanted to build your own GPT, your own AI that you can converse with and include for your employees, your customers, your clients, uh, even as a SaaS product, uh, I've got an amazing kind of solution for you, I think. So uh, inside of software, I've heard several people asking about being able to do this, include you know, an embeddable GPT inside of their, uh, of their software app. And there are a, a few other products that are similar to this, chat-based being one of them. Um, but I think I found, uh, you know, I just learned about this, uh, this product called chip.ai, which uh, is really interesting. Uh, the, the two founders are actually people that I've met previously. They're really awesome, come from the education sphere. And so the design and the, and the uh, concept behind this uh, product is just super incredible. Um, they're really, really great guys. And I really have not been using it for that long, but I can really recommend this product. It's really awesome. Um, so how would this work? Uh, there's a couple of different ways uh, that we can do this. Um, I've just got kind of some templates opened up for software. Uh, I'm just gonna try this kind of client portal because I think it's kind of the most relatable in my opinion. We'll just use this as a template and uh, you can just find this on software's kind of template thing. I'm gonna click on use template here and then I'll select my data source, which I've already got a, a data source, an Airtable data source connected, but you could connect one if you wanted to. I'll hit continue and then I'll just click copy this base to my Airtable account. It's going to ask me what workspace in Airtable I want to apply it to. I'll click add base. And here's the base from that template app. Uh, and I've also got the client portal has been built. Software is going to check very quickly to make sure that the base is there and that all the connections are uh, enabled. And after a few seconds, it's going to give me the option to just go straight to that new application that it created. All right, so we're in our client portal. Now, the going back to Chip, the cool thing about this is that we've it starts us out with kind of this demo um, application here, um, and this is really an amazing thing. So, if you've ever used ChatGPT, it's kind of a very similar layout. You've got some prompts, suggestions here. You've got a search bar, a chat bar here. Um, but the real power is over here on the left and up here at the top. And I'll kind of show you what I mean. So for the setup, you can set a goal if you like, um, but you can also give a name, a description, give the GPT some instructions as to what you're, what you want it to do, what you want it to accomplish. You can create some conversation starters, right? Which are these things here. Um, you can give it a a text hint. So if you're trying to prompt your users to ask a specific thing, you can put that here. Um, but then this is where you could get to turn on some amazing uh, features and capabilities for your end users, right? So the cool thing about this is that you can actually host these chip.ai uh, GPTs. You can host them on their own custom domain. And through chip, you can actually enable some user sign up and even monetize these GPTs, right? So just with chip itself, you can create GPTs and monetize them um, so that other people can use them, which is really, really, really cool. Um, you can also enable them to upload files. You can allow the GPT to generate images or recognize things in images, uh, get specific URLs that they input, and even browse the web for specific information, which is really amazing. And then, the, in my opinion, one of the most powerful parts for this use case of client tools and internal portals is the ability to upload your own knowledge sources, right? So let's say that you have some policy documents or some company resources or an employee handbook or contracts or whatever the case is, technical documentation, you can upload those right here, um, you know, with PDF, doc, TXT, with a URL, you can even upload it or, you know, tell it to look at a YouTube video or a TikTok, and it can actually use this knowledge uh, to inform the GPT's answer, which is crazy cool, um, which is, you know, allows you to build essentially any type of GPT that you would ever want to make, right? Um, and so once you've got your GPT built and it kind of performs the way that you want, this is kind of their testing area here. 
There's a bunch of different things that you can do with this as well. You've got some settings here um, where you can enable a custom domain. You can, they have an API that, that you can use with your, with your GPT. Um, you can go in and look at the chat logs. You can measure your user interactions and any transactions if you're monetizing it directly. Um, you can set it up to actually sell your GPT. So if you wanna provide trial credits, connect your Stripe account, all of this sort of cool stuff. But then in this uh, share section here, we also have the option to embed an iframe and create an embeddable widget. So what we can do here uh, and how this relates to softer is let's say that I have uh, an internal tool or a client portal or um, you know some sort of ERP system. I can actually take this embed iframe. I'm just gonna copy it here. And then if I go back to Software Studio here, I can actually use the custom code embed block with Softer, and I can actually embed this GPT directly inside of a Softer app, whether it's uh, membership gated or otherwise, if it's just a public app, I can you know, embed it directly in line of my page, and there it is. Um, the other thing that I can do is a lot of people are ask how I can incorporate custom GPTs uh, into uh, a widget. And so you can do the same thing here with this embeddable widget um, uh, code snippet. So I'm just gonna copy this. We'll go back to Software Studio. And you can do this on a app-wide level if you want the widget to be available across all pages inside of your software app. So I can go to custom code and I can embed that here if I want to. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can go to a page level and I can actually embed the custom code on specific pages as well, which is what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna embed that there. I'm gonna click save. And then when I go and I actually preview this, I'll kind of show you what this looks like, all right? So we'll click on preview here. And as always, I can preview this as different types of users. And the great thing about this is that you can control, um, thanks to software's block visibility, you can control which people see which different GPTs, right? You can have multiple different GPTs and based on a person's user role or maybe their subscription status, you can show them different pages and blocks based on those criteria, which makes this a really powerful combo in my opinion. So we've got our inline uh, GPT here, uh, but then we've also got this nice widget down here that pops up where you can go in and start chatting. Um, and it, you know, this is just super, super clean, super nice design. Um, and of course, um, Chip makes it possible to upload your own logo and your own brand colors and all of that sort of stuff to really customize this experience for your customers, your users, your employees, whoever the case is. Cool. So I hope that helps you get a better understanding of how to use Chip with Softer and hopefully inspires you in some new ways of how you can use these two and build some really incredible custom GPTs that can solve some really complex problems for you and your business.